What's good, YouTube? Welcome back to another episode of What Are They Cooking? The series where we feature the craziest Edison format replays that you have sent into the channel. Uh, as always, if you've got a replay you want to see on one of these segments, you can post it in the Discord link in the description. I just put it in the Edison format replays channel and I will take a look. Starting off today, we've got Recurring Nightmare with Phantom of Chaos. God, I just love everything about this so much already. It is, uh, yeah, it's right up my, uh, right up my alley. But more importantly, you may notice something. You may notice something, which is that once again, we have run into the bulk wing player. <laughs> you might not be able to, yeah, but this is him. This is Marshmallow. Marshmallow. You can tell because he's, the, there's, there's burn cards and black wings. There's the swallow's nest. That just, that just completely dead giveaway right there. This is the bulk wing player. We found him again. How many ladder games do you play, bro? Oh my god. <laughs> no wonder he's in so many replays. <laughs> All right, well, our, our deck is just out here being based. We're, we, we're, we're playing Jester Confi. We're playing Dark Creator. Everything about it's pretty awesome. We hit into a Marsh Ballon. That's not awesome. We take a 1,000 burn damage. Now there's going to be a Brain Control, and the opponent's going to figure out that... Oh, God, they had Road. They had Road. No, and they're going to figure out that our set card was just a Bluff Phantom the entire time. However, we do have Gords, and we have Brain Kaius to clap back. So long as we don't brain one of their Blackwing monsters and they tag out with Swallow's Nest, that would be embarrassing. So we go for the, the big gores uh, if we can. The opponent's going to Swallow's Nest. All right, so now the Swallow's Nest threat is gone. They go into a Cataster and they Soul Release us <laughs> with their freaking main deck Soul Release. We have figured it. It's dawned on us. It is dawned. We have figured out that it's bulk wings. Good job. Okay. Now we're going to brain Caius them. Which should just win us the game, actually. <laughs> Let's be real. I Top deck Blizzard maybe is a thing. But, um... Yeah. We're gonna Caius the Cataster. We're gonna swing over that. And they have... They, they're just... They gotta draw something. They don't draw something. They draw a Vayu, which is... It is live, so I guess they can bring out a... A 2300 dude. That just doesn't help very much. It, it'll keep them alive. We're on Sphere. Oh my god, Yes. Sphere, another incredibly awesome recurring nightmare target. We're going to summon it and use it to search a gale. Okay. Uh, I guess that's what we're searching. We're searching a gale. The opponent swings. We drop Trag, and they scoop the game. We saw that their top card was Fiend Comedian, though. We remember they do play that card with DD Dynamite. So <laughs> you've got to be prepared for any number of wacky burn shenanigans when you're against Bulk Wings. And I think we might be dead. 37 plus 50, 42, 79. Okay, we're not dead. We live with 200 life points if they triple collute, which they won't do. Okay, they will triple collute because their set card is Cylinder. And then they crow our tree, and we just scoop. Wow. All right, well, we just got, like, triple colluded. That's uh, that's rough. I guess we got to set Dust Tornado Pass. Not even that bad. We can drop the fader. There's the DD Dynamite making an appearance in the video. We're going to end phase Dust Tornado the Swallow's Nest. Now we're going to go for the Caius the Shadow Monarch. Our battle fader should have gotten banished. Okay, there we go. We caught that. Could have been relevant for Dark Arms. It's a good thing that we that we noticed. The opponent is going to Brain Whirlwind Elf in us. Pretty funny. All right. They get a Sure of the Blue Flame from their deck, and now it's our turn. Are we going to brain them back? No, we're going to Storm. We get charged. They randomly Crow to keep us off three darks. However, the real play here is Brain, Attack, Summon Sphere of Chaos, and then search I don't even know what. Do we just we search a Junk Synchron, which I guess is a card that does stuff in this deck. Opponent going to set that DD Dynamite and swing, but the Sphere isn't destroyed. Also, it's a level 5, meaning we can go in for Mistworm here, this actually would have been rough if they had had, like, a bottomless, because our dad is now just dead. But they don't, so they got to use their Battle Fader in Blackwing. <laughs> Why am I not surprised? Why am I not surprised that the Bulkwing player has Battle Fader in their... Imagine you're playing against Blackwings, and they just randomly Fader you. You'd be like, what the hell is going on? But you wouldn't have realized that you're up against the Bulkwing player here, who is losing their Shura to a Raikou, unfortunate they're gonna set some cards we swing over their their guy how much damage does dd dynamite do again if they banish our whole graveyard we'll have 15 banished cards which means we'll take 4500 damage mm, couldn't they have swung in with this Vayu? i guess maybe the risk is no yeah because the raiko would have just popped one of the back row but the dd dynamite is going to do 4500 it's just not enough, though. We live on 100 life points from the DD Dynamite, and then we attack for game. 
tragic tragic ending for the bulk wing player i'm so sad. i want to see them win with dd dynamite in one of these videos i think we have probably before given how many times they've been featured on the channel but yeah tragic i guess okay moving on next one we have is it's another one of this deck it's probably the last time i'll feature this one but yeah it's it's a lot of fun it is a it is a cool build for sure. I'm definitely I'm a fan. I'm a supporter. We're getting dust shooted. Oh, we're on Machina. People keep finding new ways to fill in the slots that are available in here. Our list our, our hand doesn't do anything though. That's the that's kind of the the rough the, the rough part here. I think we just die. Maybe we can draw under Trigodia off common shit. Nope. <laughs> nope. Nope. We can't. Okay, moving on to the next game. Moving on to the next game. We bricked game one. Okay, game two. This is we're on Barbaros as well. I guess if you're going to play Advanced Draw, it kind of makes sense. Advanced Draw and, like, Skill Drain. I have a build, by the way, with Advanced Draw I'm working on. It's it's very spicy. You're going to you're gonna love it. It's going to be amazing. So we're summoning a Gear Frame, and we're pitching to summon a second Fortress. Okay. be pretty sick if they drew a Cyber Dragon right now. We're going to add back Caius. Just hoping we top that Brain Control, I guess. I don't know. Uh, what do we draw? We draw into Sork, that's dead, but the Shining Angel can kind of wall for an indefinite period of time. We're just going to go into a Raikou, draw two, set, set. Okay, we can now use the gear frame effect, but the opponent is going to go into Fader to stay alive. However, they don't have enough to out all of our stuff. Return from the different dimension, though. That's a start. We can draw two more cards. Chaos Sork comes down, set our hand, summon Kaius, banish one of these. And then banish the other one. We just got we just got hand looped for both of our honests, but I guess we did clear pretty much the entire board. Now we're gonna bring out the Barbaros, draw two cards. Can you advance draw a face down monster? Can you advance draw a re maybe? I don't know if you can. It's like kind of random what what is known about us like it attributes for cost right so it, you would think it would be the same as icarus but maybe it's just different because it's the level instead of the type that's what's confusing as shit about this game um so the opponent's just attacking we're taking big damage here dang are we actually gonna lose no 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 shot no shot we've got we've got this game number two right trade in allure we're drawing card oh barbaros or that's what we're doing <laughs> Wait, we can flip up Skill Drain and attack for game with Barbaros Ore because it's so stupidly huge. It's it's freaking 3,800. God, why is it so big? It's so big, but it has an effect that causes it to not do battle damage. But if Skill Drain is on the field, obviously, this is not the case anymore. I've, I've tried messing around with Barbaros Ore as well, but I never got a build that I thought was good. However, the card is very funny. I would like to see, I'd like to see a build that uses it. We're going to Common Charity, draw two, trade in, draw two more, activate Summoner's Art, search what? <laughs> we have a we have a machine target for Summoner's Art so we can summon Fortress. That's that's pretty funny. That's pretty neat. All right, we're going to attack with the Fortress. Opponent's going to take the 25. Uh, they brought an Electric Virus, which is kind of not that great against Machine of Fortress. They're going to Raikou our back row. Okay. They draw a second Fader. Their hand is so bad, actually. All right, they're just gonna drop Fader. They draw into an Honest. That could maybe help at some time. Opponent needs like, why did they not Torrential there? Actually, that was just such a prime Torrential mo. That was, why didn't they? Huh? Why did you not Torrential, my guy? All right, End Phase Typhoon hits our Common Charity. Unfortunate. Lore of Darkness. They're going to summon. Now they're going to aggressively Torrential. I'm pretty sure there's just a worse Torrential than than like they would have had it on our turn. But okay, gonna add back the battle fader. Pitch Chris. We pitched two for hand size to get the Christie alive for next turn. Very nice. Fader going to keep us alive? No, it's not. They mind crush the battle fader and attack for game. All right, cool match against Chaos Fairy. Next match we have is Frost and Flame Dragon, one of my all-time faves of the format. We're going to see a uh, Volcanic Rocket get summoned. Of course, uh, the deck's kind of like a Volcanic Diva Synchro thing. Whoa 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 we're main decking shadow imp that's some hate okay we hit into a tragodia opponent's going to bring down that big track it looks like they're playing cyber machines or something which is kind of equally cool here we're gonna attack in there's the frost and flame dragon do we have a fire in our graveyard we do not they took our fire monster but we can hit over it with the android and then main phase two we can drop the frost and flame dragon no we're not gonna do that why not just out the, the thing? I guess we, we want to wait for a real threat since this thing's only 24. Opponent goes double terraforming for fusion gates plus gear tower. What are they? 
what are they up to here? We're going to Typhoon the new one. Unfortunately, it is just the Fusion Gate, so we didn't manage to make a second Gadgeltron hit timing or miss timing. Now we're going to bring down that Frost and Flame Dragon pitch, take down the Gadgeltron, attack over the Trigodia. Very efficient. Opponent's just going to set pass. We pitch a shell to kill that. We're also on Abyss Soldier in here, which is a neat inclusion. How many water monsters are we playing? I don't know. We're going to bring down the Altanen. Okay, that clears the board. We're going to summon Cyber Valley. Activate Machine Duplication. We're going to draw two cards here. Draw two. Set the Mind Con and pass. Volcanic Shell. Going to add one to our hand. We can now kill this Cyber Valley if we really want. Yeah, let's pitch a, sh pitch a shell and pass. We're going to set the Honest. Now we summon Abyss Soldier. Bounce it back. Attack for game. All right, the Abyss Soldier came in clutch at the end there. Helped us go for game over the set Honest. Game number two. Oh, they're on Zwei as well, huh? Okay. Are they on, they gotta be on, like, DNA surgery or something, right? I guess we haven't seen it yet, but I, I assume it's in there. They're gonna tag into Valley. End phase Typhoon gonna hit the Mirror Force. Now we're gonna have Mind Control. That's gonna be two more draws. Very efficient. Oppression's gonna have to get used on Gear Town here. Are we gonna... Are we gonna... We're not gonna oppression the Gear Town? Okay. We're just gonna go into Fortress instead, because we can do that. Uh, and they can't even fortress us back because, well, okay, now we're going to try to oppression and damage step? That's, no. All right. Although the, we are under, like, no, 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 we're fine. It's all good. We're going to crash a mother grizzly, which we're apparently also, Coderus? Coderus? Is it your, what? All right, we're just revealing mid-game two that we're actually playing an entire second deck in our deck, and it's, all right, it doesn't even destroy, so the gear town's not going to go off. So apparently we're just playing Warrior of Atlantis and Coderus and Salvage. How do you have room for all of this? I, I, all right, we're going to add back Coderus, add back Mother Grizzly, and then summon Grizzly, activate the field spell, and run over the Cyber Dragon's Y. Opponent's going to activate Terraforming, get Fusion Gate. Fusion Gate will take out the uh, take out our field spell. We're going to go for Summoner Monk. Oppression's got to get used here, right? Okay, Oppression. we will be oppressed. We're going to attack for some damage. Zwei comes down. We are on multiple Starlight Roads? Why are we on multiple Starlight Roads? That's wild. Okay. We're going to hit over their Zwei. They kind of can't do anything because of Royal Oppression. Yeah, no. I don't know what all the proto cybers are about here. All right, a little bit of a weird build by the opponent, but hey. All right, Frost and Flame Dragon got summoned. It hit the field. We pulled through with Abyss Soldier and stuff. Very funny build. Uh, final match we have is... Tethys Fairy, I think it's like a, a variation on that deck. I, I've only showed it like once on this segment before, so I figured we could do it one more time. One more, one more time. I'm not a huge fan of this build of fairies, just because I feel like the other fairy builds are better. But, you know, it's still a, a decent fairy deck, I think. Uh, we're going to go ahead and set Legacy. We can use it like a funny battle trap if we want, but we're not going to because we get stormed. We're going to swing, but we get compulsed. However, we can use one of our Hecatrices here to add a Valhalla and then just go special summon the uh, special summon the Tethys and hold everything in hand for the Trag, which we should just... Actually, we can't drop it because the Stardust will just kill it. we got to try to swing over it with the Hecatrice, which is going to work with Honest. Okay. We set a Legacy which we will now use, and we will swing into the set monster. They take out our Valhalla, but joke's on them. We've got a second one ready to go. They try to Avarice, and they actually declare their targets, which is, uh, you know, nicely done. We use green light here, which puts us to five fairies, so we pitch the Christia. Maybe we just shouldn't have green lighted that, because if the Hecatrice dies, then we just get to drop Christia on them. I don't know. We're gonna We're going to get torrentialed. Which is not great. We flip up Jar, set two more. Opponent end phase calls. We can call our Christia here. That's going to work out pretty well for us. Run over the Stardust. I think this call should have died. Okay, there we go. We got it. We swing in, but it's just a hamster, which doesn't do anything under Christia. Christia is, it's putting in the work. I mean, yeah, they draw Debris Dragon. That doesn't do anything. So we're going to go on to a game number two. Game number two, we open up Creature Swap. I'm having flashbacks to last episode here. We go Hecatrice, add Valhalla. Valhalla, special Tethys? No, we special Christia. Christia eats a deep prism. We set pass. They Raiko our Valhalla. Caius our guy, but we're going to have to orange light that, I think. Yeah, because that would have just been way too bad if we let that go through. We swing it with Warrior Lady and we pass. Opponent's going to summon a Kaiku. A Kaiku? What a weird ass card to bring in. Okay, we summon out a Sura Priest. Attack in, bounce it back, and pass. So we could potentially Asura Priest creature swap them at some point. We just keep poking with the Asura Priest. 
opponent draws a lad, which they're apparently... I think they're just, like, net decking Jeff Jones, actually. I should have... The, the Knight Assailant really should have clued me in on that, actually. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to go for the Pot of Avarice. This time, not going to get green-lighted. I'd be so salty if I activated a Pot of Avarice and got green-lighted, actually. <laughs> All right, we're just going to banish the Drill Warrior, set some, some back row, and pass. We try to swing for a game, but Dimensional Prison going to come down now. The Drill Warrior comes back, but we don't even have a Dandy in rotation, so this Drill Warrior is kind of not doing a whole lot. I don't know. We go for Creature Swap. We pass, get our guy back. Now we're going to get the Caius again. Going to swing for 1,200 direct, and then what do we do? We set the DD Crow. We're going to tribute summon Tethys. Tethys attack the set monster. That eats a mirror force. Now we banish two to summon out the soul of purity and light. The opponent's going to add back the Caius, though. Heavy Storm. We chain legacy of Yada. Brain control, and we're dead. Okay, moving on to game number three. Game number three. How's our hand looking? It's it's fine. It's decent. I don't know why we didn't set the legacy of Yada Garasu, though. What are we? Are we saving it for next game? What are we doing here? Okay, we eat a Dimensional Prison. Now we bring down the Christia, and the opponent just happens to not have an out in their five-card hand. Very funny. All right, so we're just getting massive, stupid value off of this Archlord Christia. They, okay, they finally draw into their out. They got a Mirror Force. That'll do it. Deprison will also do it. They attack. We got Mirror Force. No, we're just going to prison it. We don't want it going back to the top. We want it gone forever. Opponent summons out. The uh, Lone Fire goes into a Dandelion in defense mode and passes. We're going to activate Legacy. We're going to attack over the Dandelion, and they get two tokens. So, I mean, Light and Darkness Dragon could be pretty, could be decent here. Yeah, the one weird thing about Tethys Fairies, by the way, is notice how, like, little Tethys gets resolved in any of these games. It just feels like Tethys itself might be the, might be, an, like, a, a bit of a, a meme. I don't know. Like, the you're usually just winning with, like, fairy stuff, like Valhalla, Christia. Maybe we gotta find an alternative to Tethys. But people feel like Tethys is the best thing to go in that slot, and it might be. I don't know. I just feel like Tethys never it never really goes off, you know? But I get maybe like the ten per the ten percent of games where it does go off, it's just like really crazy. Speaking of things being really crazy, look at how value this morphing jar was for them. I should have played around that. It's gotta it's clear it's Jeff Jones by now, dude. Uh so we get back to Drill Warrior. We could have orange lighted the Drill Warrior, which I don't know why we're orange lighting it now when you could have just orange lighted it to prevent them from getting the dandy back. Now we call Tethys. All right, Tethys is going off. Okay, Tethys is... We get to, All right, see? This is the, the, like, X percent of the time where it goes off and it's crazy. Why did we stop drawing, actually? Didn't we draw another Tethys? Why did we stop? All right, we're going to bring out the... Bring out the Christia, but we just need a bottomless. All right, I'm, co I'm confused by what happened on that turn. Maybe... I just didn't see it right or something. That's a possibility. Opponent's going for Quick Draw Dandy. Do they just go for Caius on our thing? They do. All right. We've got a jar being used at this point. I don't know why. Um, we can special Tethys. Use jar, but we miss. Okay. All right. It's time for Tethys to go on again. We're gonna we're resolving an Avarice, which is it's funny. We probably draw a Fairy here. All right. Tethys is happening. Tethys is happening. I'm proven wrong. We're doing okay. We drew some cards. That's pretty good. I mean, the thing is, a lot of the cards you draw just aren't that great either, but we get we get uh, honested, so I mean, it's going well. It's going well. We draw into a Typhoon. That doesn't really help. Knight of Silent will take out... Why didn't we use Tethys in our draw phase? Didn't we just draw Purple Light? I feel like we just keep not using the Tethys. After we've done such a good job of sticking it, too. Well, the Crow should just end this game, right? Yeah. All right. So Tethys went kind of hard in game number three, at least. Didn't do much in the first two, but we got some we got some crazy draws here. So that was that was nice. I don't know if there's a better card to go in that slot or not. It probably there probably isn't. I don't know. I would have to think or look at it, uh, which I haven't really done because I don't like Valhalla. But maybe if I messed around with one of these builds, I would I would look at, it. or maybe I would just play Tethys. I don't know. It's like, you got Tethys, you got the draw traps. If you can get it out, it's decent. As always, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Furthermore, if you enjoy my content, you should think about becoming a channel member. You get access to tons of bonus content, and it's a great way to help support the channel.